In this lesson, we will introduce the concept of pressure. The intensity of a force at a surface is described by stresses. Here we have a force F acting on a surface that has area A. We can break up this force into three components. A component in the normal direction N, and two components in the tangential directions T1 and T2. The component of the force that points in the direction normal to the surface is labeled Fn. The stress associated with this component is denoted by sigma and has the value of Fn divided by the area A. The component of the force in the T1 direction is Ft1 and the related stress is Ft1 divided by A. The component of the force in the T2 direction is Ft2 and the related stress is Ft2 divided by A. We'll use the symbol tau to represent the stress in the tangential direction, also called shear stress. Pressure is related to the normal stress and is a measure of the intensity of the force in the normal direction. So how do fluids produce pressure on surfaces? We can get a physical explanation of pressure by examining the molecules that make up a fluid. Imagine a gas is in a sealed container and this container is in a vacuum. We now zoom in to a very small section of the container wall and examine four scenarios. In the first scenario, there are two gas molecules near the wall and they are moving with a velocity v toward the wall. Let's say the molecules have a total mass of m. When the molecules collide with the surface, their momentum changes direction. In order for their momentum to change, a force must have been exerted by the wall. And from Newton's third law, the molecules must have exerted an equal and opposite force on the wall. The normal component of this force per area is the pressure P. Since momentum is the product of mass and velocity, both quantities must play a role in pressure. Now if we increase the number of molecules while keeping the velocity of the same, the pressure would increase because more force would be required to change the momentum of the molecules. Alternatively, if we had kept the number of molecules the same but increased their velocity, the pressure also would be higher than in the first case. The highest pressure would occur if we increased both the number of molecules and their velocity. If the container were not in a vacuum and instead was surrounded by a fluid, such as the atmosphere, the wall would be bombarded by molecules from both sides. The net pressure force on that section of wall would be the result of molecular collisions from both sides of the wall. The unit of pressure in the SI system is the pascal. One pascal is equal to one newton per meter squared. In the British gravitational or BG system, pressure is expressed as pounds force per square foot, abbreviated as PSF, or alternatively, pounds force per square inch, abbreviated as PSI. Pressure is often expressed in other units as well. One standard atmosphere, or ATM, is equal to 1.01325 times 10 to the 5 pascals, or 14.696 psi. This value represents the typical mean atmospheric pressure at sea level. One bar is equal to 100,000 pascals, and both one tor and one millimeter mercury are equal to 1 over 760 atmospheres.